For more than two decades, today's guest has been writing funny, heartfelt plays that have won over audiences and critics alike. Now he's making his long-awaited Broadway debut with Other Desert Cities, perhaps his best play at the Booth Theater. Please welcome John Robin Bates. Hello. How are you? But Robbie, you would say Robbie. Well, I want to talk to you about this. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, I always read articles that say, well, friends call him Robbie. Yeah. That's your preferred... I just, I'm not really John Robin, except except on the page. So wh why did that, st who started that? My parents, when I was really young, they were, they said, he's a Robbie, he's not John Robin, John Robbins, and I was glad they did that because it was so English and fancy, and they weren't English and fancy, but I like the name, it's a great name on paper. Also, three named playwrights, uh -huh. there's a long tradition of that. I, I would like J.R. Bates. Yes, but that would be sort of, I would be a different man if I were to I think it'd be, well, Bates. okay, well, let's talk about this. So the day, Other Desert Cities just opened on Broadway. The day before you turned, I'm about to, I'm about to out him. Like I care. Your day he turned 50. Yeah. So you are now 50 years old. I am. And you're Robbie. Yeah. A name you are were you given when that's... you were an infant. Oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> I'm just wondering at what, like, at what, do you, do you think it's appropriate for an 80-year-old man to be called Robbie? Yeah, Robbie Lance was one of the great agents of all okay. time. Uh, so you're owning it. Yeah, r r yeah. Robbie Robertson is gonna, in the rock star in the band is still going to be Robbie Robertson. He's not suddenly going to be some other Robbie. Okay. Or okay. Robertson. I'll buy that. What am I supposed to do? Why, why didn't you use the name Robbie Bates when you became a playwright? Because you thought you'd be more successful with three names? Yes, I'm that calculating. I'm exactly <laughs> that calculating. That was all I thought. In fact, I communicated to my parents before I was born that I would rather be called John Robin because I knew I was going to be a playwright. I, I planned the whole thing. It all worked out perfectly. It, it, it was as though I had a master plan from day one. Yes. So do you have a really healthy attitude about um, aging? And was turning 50 a big deal to you? I mean, obviously. No, I'm grateful. I mean, I think, I think it's, it gets easy. I'm much, you know, it's much harder to get me flustered. And I, I, I like being slightly older. I think the worst maybe pa has passed. Uh -huh. So I, I feel that that's. That's a good thing, really. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're this very boyish, attractive man. And is this what you pictured a 50-year-old man to look like when you were younger? Or has the whole perception changed? I think the perception has changed. And also, when not in clothes, I do look 50. <laughs> so I stay closed. So this is where we clothes. run the photos over the... Did you get those? <laughs> They haven't broken out yet. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so, so turning 50 is a good thing. I like it quite a bit. It's a nice chapter. And, and now you are a wildly successful Broadway playwright. Yes. Apparently, it's been a big deal. Like, finally. All these people are like, finally. Finally, you have a play on Broadway. Did it you never feel ne that? It never occurred to me that that's what I was supposed to be doing. Right. Literally never occurred to me. And I, I think Sam Shepard didn't have a play on Broadway till he was even slightly older than, than, than me. Right. So I was just happy to have a play done. Uh-huh. Uh, but now I'm just ruined forever. I've eaten of the poisoned apple. I'm never going back to Off-Broadway. I will make fun of Off-Broadway playwrights <laughs> from now on. That's an Off-Broadway play. I've been, walk I've been insufferable. I walk around going, oh, that, but that's Off-Broadway. <laughs> So it doesn't feel any different? It, no, it does feel wonderful. Yeah. It feels very different, in fact. I didn't know there was a new experience to be had, and it's great. It's sort of steeped in tradition and history and beautiful old theater, and mm -hmm. they're so nice to you at the door, <laughs> and the, there's a stage door that it's not, you know, someone isn't buzzing you in to wait in the lobby somewhere, and it's just really beautiful. You wear a tie sometimes because it's Broadway. And you stand in the back and pace a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. The people at the bar, you know, in the lobby, they, uh -huh. they'll give you a whiskey. Nice. Just because you wrote the play that's in the theater. They like playwrights. I mean, not to say that they don't off-Broadway, but it's fantastic. It's a whole new thing. You know what it is? It's like that first moment when someone upgraded you to first <laughs> class. You've been coach. upgraded. I've been upgraded from coach on, like, Freddie Laker airline. <laughs> People Express, <laughs> and now I'm in Virgin on f in first with one of those things Upper class. where you go back and sleep. You can lay down. Yeah. 
That's how I feel. In fact, I do want to lay down. <laughs> you can. That, that's, yeah. a, that's an option. There are different ways to work that chair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so this play is pretty terrific. Thank and you. I have to say, uh, I, I got this, this purple script, although there's actually a, a published version of it now. Yes. You can buy a fancier version of it. But I, I read the play last night, and it reads, it reads beautifully, too. That's not true of all Why plays. would you sound surprised? That it would read beautifully. Because I don't, I don't always li like reading plays. But really? I, yeah. There, that's a skill. It's a very particular skill. You have to translate it into sort of a music kind of thing. Huh. Is what it is. You might not have the music. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about this play is that it's just a really interesting setting. Five fascinating characters. Secrets, lies, booze, pot, go. Basically, that's it. That's right? a formula. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, people, some people have said that it feels uh, a little old-fashioned in a good way. It's supposed to feel old-fashioned, but not really be old-fashioned. Uh -huh. It's sort of traditional, right? But it's also slightly, uh, just everything slightly off a right. little bit, you know. So it doesn't feel like, um, with all possible respect to arsenic and old lace or something, it doesn't feel. Yeah. It. it, it so I think. Um, not to be all defensive about this whole it feels old-fashioned thing. It, it, it's, it's a form of seduction on my part. Uh -huh. um, the only form of seduction I seem to be capable of, but that's another story for <laughs> we'll get to that. the Robin Bird show. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'm sorry. Wait till those photos, uh, we till those photos get out. It's all going to change. I sent them by accident to Bill O'Reilly. So... <laughs> Something terrible is going to happen any minute now. The corruption of our youth on Broadway. Story at 11. You decide. Um, but this was your seduction. This was intentional. Yes. Well, I think it works beautifully. Thank it, you. It actually reminded me of, of why I fell in love with plays in the first place in a lot of ways. That's really nice. You know, I, I think I, I'm still stuck in that place of, of sort of those old plays that I loved so much. Grew up seeing. And these characters, uh, first of all, the Palm Springs setting, I've seen the, the, the sign on, the, the, the title's based on a sign on the highway when you turn off uh, yeah. Highway 10, right? It's to go exactly into Palm Springs right. and you can go to other desert cities. And you just think, what, what is out there? Right. You know what I picture though? It's so, my, my imagination being so limited. You remember Snoopy had a cousin? <laughs> <laughs> he had this cousin who lived somewhere in the desert, <laughs> like in Needles or someplace, Needles outside. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. And I picture if I just keep driving out there, I'm going to find sort of Snoopy's weird cousin <laughs> or, or whatever he was. And, or I think about the brother from True West who steals all the toasters. You know, <laughs> remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think out there is the unknown and mythic, whether it's Snoopy's cousin who had whiskers, big whiskers, <laughs> or the brother in True West. Why did you decide to set it in Palm Springs? Because when I was in LA mm -hmm. trying to cope with that TV show thing, I would go out to the desert. I'd go to Palm Springs a lot yeah. just to try and, cl try and clear my head. And, and I, I, my parents had a house there. And I grew up going there as a kid. And it was sort of enormous for me. It was just it spoke of a time that no longer existed. Mm -hmm. And so I knew, I knew there was a play in the place, that mm -hmm. it was a character, that it was the West, the end of the West even. Right. And it was now just parched. You mentioned doing the TV thing. Obviously you created Brothers and Sisters. I uh, did, I did. I, I, but I only was there for the first season really. My name was on it as creator for the whole time because I created it but I only really put the first season together with mm -hmm. a few other people. You created some brilliant characters and, and great dynamics and relationships. Um, and you were, what's the word you used? Were you fired? Were you let go? Were you, you we left because it we was miserable? Or? We agreed to part. I was definitely fired. I was fired, in fact, in the midst of the Writers Guild strike. Mm by using a, this thing called a force majeure clause. Apparently a strike is an act of God. And so by so doing, you know, they were able to fire me and without actually paying me. 
So, you wow. know, it was actually good because I came back home to be a playwright. Right. I mean, it really, I didn't have any, I didn't have any sort of cushion, you know. Mm -hmm. I had to just do something. Well, and the character in Other Desert Cities, uh, Rachel Griffith's character, obviously yeah. has been living in Sag, she had a breakdown, living in Sag Harbor. You left LA, moved to Sag Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> it, it fell apart. Fell apart. You, you, you weren't in a hospital like her character or, or were no, you? No, I wasn't. I would say if I was because there's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. But I was, uh, I was being cared for very minutely by loved ones and, and concerned medical professionals. What was so crushing about this particular thing <sighs> happening to you? I think I, I had taught myself to fight harder and stronger than other people, and I wouldn't give up, and I wouldn't let go. And the levels of, I think, messiness in the studio system, in the, in, at a television program, at dealing with not just the network, but the studio and, and the agendas, I think I just, it was the opposite of the man I wanted to be, mm. the man doing, doing, sort of trying to navigate those waters. I just wanted to write. And I think my version of the show was sort of incredibly hard to sell. And, and so I was trying to do too many things that I had no skills for, huh. you know, make a commercial show and, and uh, fight. And I, I guess I, I sort of felt a sense of exhaustion all the time and betrayal most of the time. And I felt my own sort of temperament was becoming warped and I, I was becoming dangerous and unpleasant and and awful. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I mean I don't think it's a new story, you know. It's 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 something that happens and you either walk away or you become someone else. I also felt a profound sense of, of, I was just another American who quit. Like I was going out, I was gonna cash in, I sold a thing, I would drive to the studio every day. I was just gonna be a guy who never lived up to the promise he set for himself, not other people. Mm. So I think I created a dynamic where I had to be removed. So do you, I'll look back at it as, as uh a blessing in disguise? For the greatest, you know, I learned more in those years about myself and what I won't believe in. The, the, the thing of sort of, of learning to walk again was really wonderful, huh. you know, of just starting to feel better, starting to feel that I could make things again. Mm. Uh, learning from scratch. You asked me what it's like to be 50. Well, 50 is someone who has scars and cuts and they've healed, you know. That's what 50 is. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, so it's much better. And, and I, it must have taught me something about how to use my time because when I came back, time became much more precious once I figured out how to write a play again, <laughs> which took a while. In this play, which I, which I think is probably will be produced everywhere. Do you think? Actually, I have a question about that. You've you've written how many plays? Um, Twelve or so. Well, yeah, about a dozen plays. Yeah. Do you lose track of some of them sometimes? <laughs> I want to. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which of your plays get produced the most? Um, none. Is that really true? Yeah, they don't get done much. I mean, Three Hotels gets done a lot because it's two people right. and economically sound. Right. Um, but I don't really know what gets done. So you're not living off the fat of your, of your plays? I don't even think Gandhi could have lived on, like, you know, <laughs> the income with his, ba you know, bowl of bean, mung beans and soy products. No. Well, you grew up in L.A. and other places. L.A. and other places, yes. Right. So. And you went to, like, Beverly Hills High, is that right? Nine, that is 90210. True. I did. I was, I was like one of those kids. You actually are sort of known for kind of knowing everyone. You've, you've had. Is that true? Well, I, I always feel like you, uh, 
you have a lot of Hollywood friends and a lot of uh, you've worked with a lot of stars, and I'm sure your iPhone has an amazing list of contacts in it. What would really dazzle me in your iPhone? I so am not talking about that. A, <laughs> C, <laughs> that if if anybody watching this could see just the depths of shallowness of that question, they would go to like, you know, 1-800-STOCKLIST-OVERSTOCK.COM <laughs> buy a gun. Like I'm some Liberty gibbet who just like, you know, is at Bar Centrale drinking martinis with You've had people. a good career. You've, you've had a good... I'm a recluse. Interesting. You really are. Yeah. Ask anybody. I'm not good in public at all. I have like six friends. So I'm not noticing any big social issues? That's because I'm filled with tranquilizers right now. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's working. Whatever, whatever works for oh you. Oh, my God. There's enough <laughs> Thorazine in me right now to stun a rhino. So can I'm we... I'm kidding. You know, when I was uh, first sort of getting into this world, you were, you were part of, like, the, the cutest, hottest gay theater couple. You were, like, you, you and Joe Mantello were, were what we were all supposed to aspire to. Right? Is that a question? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a leading. Go on. So, uh, was that annoying to sort of be, like, like to be, like, held up as, like, because you were one of the first sort of out, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily... I think it bred a certain amount of ill will, actually, oddly enough. Yeah? It was, yeah, I think that, that like, you know, they... New York can be um, kind of, it can be the magnificent capital of schadenfreude. And I think, I, you know, I think it was too... Hmm. And it doesn't bring out the best in people, I think, including the subject, mm -hmm. in a way. But, you know... The sort of macro view of was maybe it was sort of good for for gay sort yeah. of the notion of of, of gay couples, right. a, yeah. And the Times was 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 into that. So, but you think everyone's just secretly waiting for for it to explode, or I just felt a slight. And I'm basically paranoid, maybe, but I felt a sort of slight thing shift. I can't describe it better than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It puts a lot of pressure on a couple, too. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, it just does. And we were very quiet people, yeah. frankly. Yeah. Well, and obviously, you're still working together. He directed this play. He did. And uh, you're obviously good collaborators. We are. It's amazing. So, um, so he's hugely talented. He made me look much better than I actually am, and and forced me to be better than I actually am, which is great. Because he stayed in the theater after I left. Right. So he got better and better, and I forgot how to do it. Right. He he really taught me again. Were you excited to see him go back on stage in the normal heart? I was so excited. I was so proud. Yeah, it was amazing. I was very. It was very hard to watch. I I loved that performance so much, but it, you know, it's awful to see someone you love you know, suffering like that in a play. Right, you right. just can't. And then I, I would go backstage and afterwards sort of shaken up. And he was fine. He was just fine. <laughs> he would just turn it off. He was having, you know, drinks and stuff backstage. And he was like, what's the matter, Robbie? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Awful. <laughs> what a great play. That What a great production. Was he robbed of the Tony Award? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Trying to get, I'm trying to, you know, get you passionate about it. Pissed off. Don't why is everything should've... about Tony Award? Why is everything about awards? All the play. There is no other the industry, industry in the world where people they give you an award for like wearing good socks. Practically, yours are pretty good, actually. Is that well? I'm trying to get it. The, <laughs> the Paul Smith Award. <laughs> Well, so would it be annoying if I said that I think I want you to win the Tony for best it, play for it would other be desert like, cities? It would be an outrage. Very charming of you, and I would be appreciate it. Okay, I would love that to happen. I guess I read in an interview recently. You said you might start acting again. Is that true? I never said that. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe ridiculous. It's a misquote. I never said that. Because you were, at, I mean, you were in. First I of was all, a one terrible fine day, actor. I was a terrible day. actor. Really. Just a terrible, it was like a canoe with feet. I was so stiff. <laughs> it was like a totem pole. 
but it's like an Easter Island statue with a mouth that opened and words came out stiffly. I, I don't, yeah. Were you horribly uncomfortable the whole time you did it? I was mortified. Really? Just mortified by the whole thing. Just because I wasn't good, you know, and you, when you're not good at something, you're just embarrassed all the time. Like, Tommy Sadowski is a great actor, just to pull a name out. Oh, can I ask you a question about him, first of all? Why not? He plays the character of Trip. Yes. Isn't Trip your three-legged dog? That is true. See? Is, is, is Trip still around? Yes, thank God. I just left him a few minutes ago. Oh, very cute He's dog. I saw, I saw the photo. He rewrites for me. On so, you, so you're named Thomas Sadowski. Thomas does have a puppy dog quality to him. Yeah, but it's a good name for a person, too. Is, does Trip appreciate this newfound success? Trip's sort of indifferent to it. Yeah. it. His main concern is basically do the qualities of the organic cookies get better when this happens? Does this mean there's more for me? Is That's his only thing. He doesn't really care about the jokes. Are there more, more treats for Trip? There are more treats for Trip. Maybe, maybe there will be a Tony for Trip. Why do you keep talking about you're because obsessed? I want to, because you're I love this play. With, that's so sweet. I, I very much doubt I will win the Tony. <clears throat> I'm sure that a wonderful play from England will win the Tony. <laughs> and all the wonderful actors from the play from England will win all the Tonys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on that note, um, everyone should go check out this beautiful play, Other Desert Cities, at the Booth Theater. That's right. Everything is wonderful. There. Thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. Robbie, 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 John Robbie, Robbie to you. Robbie. <laughs> JR, thank you for coming. JR Good to Bates. meet you. Thank you. It was very charmingly nice. Thank you for watching. We'll You're see welcome. You next. We could just no, say goodbye for, for half an hour. It's for them. Oh. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. What's the show called? Show People. Oh, Show People. That's the title of a brilliant book of essays by Kenneth Tynan. And this show. Thank you for being here. Okay, you're welcome.